do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. For Alistair Crowley, these few simple words represent the path to enlightenment. His admirers saw him as the prophet of a new age, master of the mystic arts, poet of liberty. The gods had chosen Crowley to be the prophet, and Crowley was just the guy who had an ego to say, I can handle that. By any standards, Alistair Crowley is an enigma. A man of many faces, Crowley excelled at most things he turned his attention to. He was an accomplished mountain climber, poet, chess player, and writer. What he chose to focus his extraordinary talents on was a spiritual awakening for himself and all humanity. At times, his unique message bred misunderstanding and contempt. His detractors denounced him as a Satanist, a drug addict, and a sex maniac. Clearly for some, Aleister Crowley was, and still is, a dangerous man. Aleister Crowley was an eccentric, genius, holy man. He considered himself, and many other people consider him, uh, a prophet, a prophet of, of a new age, of a, of a new aeon. In 1904, Crowley was traveling with uh, his wife, Rose. He had just married, and they were on a honeymoon. So Crowley's idea of a honeymoon was basically uh, going uh, around the world, a very long trip. And much to his surprise, this unschooled woman, she had never studied Egyptian mythology or religion or magic. So impressed with this, Crowley thought, okay, this seems to be some evidence that there is some divine hand at work here. They went to a museum and Crowley asked her to point out an image of Horus. She passed several exhibits with depictions of Horus, raising doubts about the genuineness of her visions. Then she stopped and said, there, that's it. To Crowley's surprise, she was standing in front of an image of Horus. Equally intriguing, they were standing at exhibit 666. He received other instructions which told him to go into his room on April 8th, 9th, and 10th at noon precisely with, with, the, with paper and uh, writing implement and to write down what he heard for the next hour. He did as instructed. As he sat with pen in hand, he heard a voice and wrote down every word. What was being dictated to Alistair Crowley was the book of the law. He believed the voice came from a superhuman being, and the message communicated became the cornerstone of Crowley's teachings and life. What sits at the heart of the book of the law is the phrase, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Each of us has a will. We have that duty. And do what thou wilt is what you're obliged to do with your life. To find out what your life purpose is and then do it. Early on in his magical exploration, Lon stumbled across the writings of Alistair Crowley. But the rumors about Crowley, that he was a Satanist, that he was dangerous, that he was evil incarnate, filled Lon with dread. Determined to overcome what he saw as superstitious fear, Lon sat down to read the most sacred text of Crowley's teaching. When I first got a copy of the Book of the Law, I thumbed through it, and in the back I read the comment. It was the first thing I read in the book. And the comment says, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The study of this book is forbidden. It is wise to destroy this copy after first reading. Whosoever disregards this does so at his own risk and peril. These are most dire. Now, when I read that, I felt for the first time I really had a magic book in my hand. He read the first two chapters and found the text intriguing and moving. He now knew he had Crowley all wrong. Then. He got to chapter 3. 
and it starts off, let it be first understood that I'm a god of war and vengeance. I shall deal hardly with them. And all of a sudden, the whole tenor of it changes. It becomes violent. And later on, it gets really wild, you know. Uh, uh, curse them, curse them, curse them. With my hawk's head, I peck at the eyes of Jesus as he hangs on the cross. Flap my wings in the face of Mohammed and blind him. I'm going, whoa, what's this? And all of a sudden, all of that waxy buildup of doubts that I always still had about Crowley, I was going, wow, he is the devil. <laughs> oh, no. And I read the rest of the, the book, and my hands are literally shaking because I had set myself up so much of the, the great magic in this book. For long, this magical book provoked a magical act. He decided to take the book at its word and destroy it after first reading. And it says in the third chapter, paste the sheets from right to left, whatever th that meant. At the time, I thought, well, well I'm going to glue every page together to every other every other page i went out and got elmer's glue and i and i glued the book sealed it up you know like in the book of revelations they seal up the book so i did it with elmer's glue and i tried to set it on fire and i had a book of matches and i had alcohol all over my hands even and i finally when i got the match to light it set my hands on fire and i was like ah! <laughs> yeah and the whole thing, I was so, so freaked out. The book had freaked me out. Lon finally succeeded in setting the book on fire. And so it burns from the cover back. And so the first thing I see is the book of the law on the cover. Going, the book of the law. You know? and, and it becomes an experience, a visual experience. And I get to see the book every other page of the book burn away i can read half of it all over again in flames <laughs> okay <laughs> the whole thing is like this, this like a satanic opening of bonanza you know <laughs> the very last thing that burned away th that i could read was that comment at the end the last thing i saw curl up in in flames was the study of this book is forbidden <laughs> It is wise to destroy this copy after first reading. Well, you know, at that moment, I realized, well, it's, it's too late. <laughs> okay, it's too late. It already had changed my life. What was unique about Crowley's method was the relationship between the mystical experience and the analytical scientific approach to understanding it. We have to understand that Crowley wanted to experiment with everything. Because this, for him, was a very important part of uh, the curriculum of a magician, of a true magician. A magician is someone who knows everything, who has tried everything, who has gone everywhere. There is a perception that Crowley was a lifelong drug addict and drug fiend. And it's worth pointing out that, yes, Crowley did experiment with various substances. He, he tried cocaine, he tried ether, um, hashish, and, and various other things um, to see if these altered states of consciousness in some way were helpful in the mystical and magical pursuits. Um, however, it's also important to understand that it, at this point, in time, these substances were all perfectly legal. You could go down to your chemist shop and buy these things over the counter. Crowley suffered from chronic bronchitis much of his life. This eventually resulted in numerous bouts of asthma for which he was prescribed heroin. This drug proved too strong even for Crowley's will. He remained addicted to heroin the rest of his life. Well, the end of Crowley's life was kind of sad because this man who had, you know, in his youth enjoyed a great deal of privilege and later years wound up, you know, without that. Wild rumors followed Crowley his whole life and his death was no exception. On the following day, his physician was found dead in his London apartment. 
Some speculated that Crowley had murdered him with a ritual curse. Revenge for not supplying an adequate amount of heroin in his final days. His funeral was attended by a few devoted friends and curious members of the press. Some of his writings, which were most meaningful to him, were read. Although the service was a little unorthodox, those in attendance found it dignified and respectful. He had a purpose, and he believed in it. And he dedicated everything that he had for the rest of his life toward pursuing that. And that, that in and of itself was a very admirable and noble goal, because he did that in the face of a great deal of resistance and a great deal of controversy. I think it is important to study Crowley seriously because I am absolutely convinced that he deserves it. And he is an important figure uh, in the spiritual world of the 20th century. The most important thing for you to know about Aleister Crowley is th that he was a human being who was extra human. He was only human, but he also was a holy man. And he tried as best he could to turn that only human person into a divine person. And his whole life, his whole career, was dedicated to showing others how to turn themselves from being human and how to use their humanness to become divine. Well, Paul says we're evil from birth. Every man, woman, child upon earth deserves condemnation in hell's conflagration. Well, Paul says we're evil from birth, but it ain't necessarily so. Many years ago, Lon read a magical book and the power of that magic changed his life.